Okay guys, I wanted to talk about coils in this video. Here I have pre-assembled on different stages coils. This is my test coil. This is a 0.3 millimeter. Let me focus on it. You see how much layers there is. A um, whole lot more, more layers than, for example, one millimeter coil. Look at this one compared to this. So this is the thickest one I make. Um, this coil will have very low internal resistance compared to this one and even compared to 14 gauge coil. This is the coil from 14 gauge magnet wire, copper magnet wire, and it gets epoxied all the way between each layer. Yeah, there is a process how to wind it so that it's flat. You see how flat it is on both sides and straight here and it's very rigid. Same way for all of this, let me focus, all of these coils. This is a 0.8 millimeter coil and this is a 0.8 millimeter already placed on um, plate and this one is somewhat assembled i wanted to keep it open so i can talk about different details here basically it starts with a copper strip and this copper strip usually is sharp on edges so i would end up removing edges then i would scratch it from both sides we'll make it we'll remove all the oxidation then I'll run it into the machine which places um, Captain tape. This is a 30 millimeter Captain tape which is placed on the coil. So it's insulated. And then I put it into another winding machine and I wind it and apply epoxy throughout each layers. And then I apply Captain tape, 15 millimeter to keep it in place and I allowed it to um, dry out and now it's coiled like this. This is a three inch wide and one inch on inside diameter. Um, and then I use G10 FR4 fire resistant. Um, this is material that's used for printed circuit boards and I used a 0 0.6, 0 0.8 millimeter one. They come in, in normal, uh, usually in couple sizes, 1.6 millimeter and 0 0.8 millimeter. So this is the 0 0.8 millimeter. And I straight up buy one without the copper uncladded with no copper. So I don't need to remove copper. And then what I do, I'll scratch it here uh, with sandpaper on the side which I will apply the coil to and then I use this thermal silicone which is like gasket maker and I set it I apply it on one side then I set it on this um, plate and squeeze it so pushing out all the excess um, silicone and allowed it to dry. Once it's cured then I'll remove everything around inside and out and I'm, I'll go ahead and place the uh, label north side pole just like right here. You see this got a letter N. This part that connects into the center of the coil this is made out of same thickness as the coil um, strip is so for example this one is 0.8 millimeter and i'll use a 0.8 millimeter um, piece of copper strip to go inside and then i'll use a couple uh, pieces the first one is for insulation and this is also G10 FR4 piece of board that I cut to the size whipped of this copper strip and 
a length of the copper coil here you see so it comes from the center to the edge and that goes underneath this copper strip which later on I will solder to the center um, strip here and this uh, piece of metal this is straight up metal it's iron it, when it has a good attraction to the magnet the reason why I place this over um, this is half of the thickness of what this uh, copper strip is and so this is used to counter offer repel force for this um, piece of copper strip once it's in here and um, with this uh, spacer here and it, once I solder it in there this every time I pulse into it it will try to repel it repel it and over time uh, this might damage the coil because repellent force is so strong from these coils that it literally wants to rip it off so to counter offer to counter this effect I would use a steel which every time it pulses it has a attracting effect so the bottom one repels and this one attracts and they cancel uh, repellent force each other so that's what it's used for um, then before I place it here I will epoxy it together this is one piece that's already finished it's got on one side a spacer on the other side piece of metal and what I do later I will um, remove all the uh, captain tape from here and scratch it here very well and then on the inside of the coil I'll do the same I'll scratch it here I'll apply solder here and apply solder here and I place this like this and I'll solder it from the top I'll apply the heat from the iron soldering tool from the top and that will um, solder in here and into here so this will be permanently attached also I'm gonna place some epoxy here and will epoxy it to the to the coil so at the end it's kind of gonna look like this let me focus here so you see how underneath here is epoxy this is epoxy together and it's all solid one solid piece nothing moves here and then I'll add epoxy in the center so that's the um, now let's move to the rest of the part in here as you see I would attach a thermal switch um, depends on configuration this could be normally closed normally open usually I would use 60 Celsius thermal switch 60 65 Celsius some coils like those I use 55 Celsius but I had to not place it flat the coil I had to offset it slightly slightly and then 55 Celsius works fine so 60 Celsius when you connect it uh, attach it straight to the coil then I'll use flex at 90 uh, same resin that I would use over the coil to glue it to the coil once it's glued I will attach it to 18 gauge wires this is the wires that would come with the coil I have um, brought them here with uh, four 10 gauge wires so these 10 gauge wires have multi conductor this there is like a hundred conductors in here these are very flexible wires and as you see how I twisted um, this is the bundle which later on I will apply like a sleeve to go over it but before 
I apply a sleeve, I twist it like this. This twisting process actually is pretty easy because um, when I buy this wire, I buy it as like extension cord and I cut the extension cord into eight, seven and a half, eight feet sections and extension cord will have three conductor in it. So I'll use, um, I'll open up a couple of pieces of eight feet and I'll take one from the second uh, piece and I'll add it to to the one that's got three pieces. So as I open them up, they're already twisted and it's pretty easy to add uh, additional wire to it and it makes it nice and round. This is, as you see, pretty round. It's not like wires are not sticking out. The reason why it needs to be twisted because anytime it pulses, there is a high current flows through these wires and as the current uh, flows all the wires wants to repel from each other and so if they're not twisted they'll make this bumping sound every every pulse it will be basically loud and over time because they're physically moving and bumping against each other and into each other and they can wear out I guess I don't know uh, but it's I decided to have them twisted and this works uh, very well when I do that and the reason why I use uh, 10 gauge wires these are pretty thick 10 gauge wires copper is because uh, this coil especially well on pretty much all the setups uh, pulls a lot of current it produces very sharp spikes and because of that uh, these wires if I use for example 12 gauge they will be heating up uh, these ones are slightly heating up slightly they get barely warm uh, at the end of session but 12 gauge wires will get hot and that's not normal because if the wire will start um, wear out slightly inside like breaks inside they'll um, they'll show up the point the point will show up especially like in the end of coil right here where the wire bends a lot so basically to uh, make it reliable I have to use a thicker wire uh, this or a 10 gauge wire so that's the um, later once and this is finished I will put more tape here kept on tape to keep it all together and uh, I will add a sleeve uh, red and black sleeve that I use and once I place the sleeve I will uh, put it in a mold and pour from for the bottom part I'll pour flex at 90 I'll put it as, like on an angle like this and I'll pour flex at 90 into here to fill it up to about here uh, once it dries a little bit hardens then I take it out of the mold and I um, cut it like quarter inch past this point here the edge all around just perfectly round I cut it and remove um, remove the axis here from this flex at 90 resin and then I do another second pour so I'll cover this in uh, plastic so that second pour is not gonna get on this flex at 90 and I set it in the mold again and I put it vertically like this and I pour it from the top into the handle and I fill it up with um, this calls it's a second type of resin which is hard model pro black uh, from uh, specialtyresins.com uh, and I'll pour it in the handle so that's and then once I and the handle uh, this uh, resin dries out I'll 
take it out and I sand it and polish it. And so all together, I have a coil that is like this. To completely finish coil, it might take four to five hours. And then to get to this, for a single coil, it might take another two hours. So one coil takes me a whole day to build basically seven to eight hours if you know if i'm not rushing if i try to hurry up and do it quicker then probably five hours so just so you guys know these coils are not easy to make they involve uh, a lot of precise work and that's why um, in addition the material cost for example in here it's just like a pound of copper, but I paid for just the copper uh, around $50. That's what it cost me, just the copper. And then I have to, as I said, invest like seven hours into building it. And these cables, I counted, it will be $20 just for this cable I pay. Um, and then kept on tape and epoxy and the labor that goes into it so that's why these coils are not cheap but they're a very good choice because um, this coil cannot have as low a low, a low of internal resistance as these coils these coils will trigger your muscles this coil will not this coil will be heating up fast and this is the coil that will give you a longer session much longer session three times longer session compared to this coil so these were the coils that i started with and that's what you know sota instruments uses they're using i believe 16 gauge and i use 14 gauge a little thicker one and then i started testing and first one was 0.3 millimeter and then i tested 0.5 millimeter which i don't have it here then 0.6 millimeter then 0.8 millimeter and one millimeter so uh, depends on um, your setup you can use either one you know of these coils all right guys just wanted to show you the coils and how they're made if you find this informative give me thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you in the next one